Hello. Hello, everybody. How's it going? I see a bunch of familiar names in the Me comments too. and yeah. some new people in the comments. So hi, everyone. Well, it's day one of the bucket bag workshop. And I'm super pumped because I want to see how this works. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, we may get you sewing yet. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. I'm not gonna make any promises, but this one is exciting. And first, before we start, I want to introduce Linda Remmers. She's our Hoop Sisters co-founder, digitizer, designer, owns two local quilt shops. And I'm gonna start calling you our resident bag lady. Yeah, I, I'm known for my bags. I love a good bag. <laughs> yep. And I think the last bag you made was a hit and I have no doubt that everyone's going to really love what we're going to show you today too. So thanks so. for joining us, Linda. Thank you. I'm actually going to see you in person next week. Are yes. you ready? Um, is Dwayne ready? 
uh, <laughs> Dwayne, everybody, the cleaning lady's coming Monday. You guys are coming Monday. So time it so that she's done and all the <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> well, this is so fun. So we're excited you're here today. We do have a little bit of housekeeping that I want to go over before we dive into all the good stuff. Um, but so Linda's my aunt. She's also the co-founder with her sister, Annie Moody. They're there in the center. Um, and then me and Sarah are towering over everyone on the ends. <laughs> and um, Sarah's my sister. So you know, it, it's everybody's sort of related, except for the next person that I'm going to introduce you to. So um, you guys started this back in 2008. Can you believe yes. it? Doesn't that sound like a long time ago? It was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> it was a long time ago. That's right. So we've been doing this for quite some time and we're still having fun. So we're going to keep doing it. How about that? Um, and then we also, I want to definitely introduce you to Nina Gladden. She is your customer service extraordinaire. She's in the comments today. She'll be helping answer different questions. And um, so if you have something, just drop it in. But also know if you have a question about specifically your personal order or your account or your something like that, you can get a hold of her. And she has, she answers the phone. We have a real person answering the phone, which is uncommon these days, I feel like. So say hi to Nina. Um, and her contact information is there as well. So just know that we are here to support you in whatever way we can. Also, I know we have some new people in our, mostly our VIP Facebook group. So if you're new around here, I would love it if you would drop a number one in the comments, if you feel like you're new around here. Um, <laughs> and for those of you who are going to drop a number one in the comments, I do like to just kind of tell you what the workshop is. Um, so a Hoop Sisters workshop, this is a completely free virtual event. If you register in advance, we always give you a free downloadable gift. And, and we can show that too when we show the bag here in a second. Yep. So if you registered, you got the free gift. And then joining and watching and learning is totally free too. And we we'll are definitely love to also present special offers during the workshops that you can choose to participate in if you want to try this out. So that's what a workshop is with us. And we're so excited to be here doing another one. And I see some ones in the comments. So welcome, welcome if you're a number one. And then we have a ton of shops doing the bucket bags too, and they're all in stock. So this is the first page. I'm going to go to the second page in just a second. Um, and I see a question I'll answer real quick too. If you're watching on YouTube, you do not have to grant permission. It's just a Facebook thing. So if you are watching on Facebook, you're going to want to grant StreamYard permission. You should only have to do that once. So hopefully that answers that question. So if you are near one of the shops on screen now, we encourage you to go order through them. They have this in stock. Some of them have already hosted some classes mm -hmm. and they will be glad to help you. Here's the second page of those shops. Um, I'm going to actually highlight two of them that have done classes and show you some of the things that people have made. So very exciting. So if you're near one of these shops, please, please, please order through them first and foremost. If you do not have one near you, you can order through us and we will talk about that at the end. OK. Um, all right, Linda, I say yeah. we, we uh, show them what they came for. What do you think? OK, let's do it. <laughs> so let's show you the bucket bag that we've been advertising. Yes. That's, they haven't actually seen a picture of it, I don't think, right? I don't a full think so. I don't, I don't, and we should show them the free gift too, because that is so cute. As I yeah. said, coffee. Yeah. So this is, there's actually two styles of bucket bag. Maybe you should make, there we go. This is the quilted version, I'm calling it. And both versions have sort of the same cute little swoopy area in the middle. They all have zippers on all four. There's four zippers all the way around. You, the bottom is round. That's why it's called a bucket bag. And as Aubrey's description showed you, it's got very sturdy sides because we use hoop shape in there, which we'll talk about that in a minute. It's closed with a drawstring that you can, it's long enough you can either use it like over the shoulder or you can pull all four of them up and just have a handle. You can choose to put pockets on the inside. 
or not. Those are optional. And then the second version is a Sashiko version. I love this. This is the first one I did because I wanted to make the Sashiko. And I thought, well, maybe not everyone wants to do the Sashiko. So then I made the quilted one and you ended up with two. So they both have this straight line quilting in this area. And then the Sashiko version actually has eight different Sashiko designs all the way around the bag, eight different ones. It's so awesome. kind of fun. It's beautiful, isn't it? And this is the traditional color of Sashiko. It's kind of a old fashioned um, hand stitch technique from years and years ago, Japanese hand stitching. And so this, that's where that inspired from. Um, but as you'll see in a minute, we're going to show you a bunch that are way different colors. And then this one I just finished up. This is the one the videos are going to be on um, for our workshop. But this one, isn't this pretty? I, I think love that's it. my favorite. I yeah. love it. Um, so the quilted one has crosshatch quilting on the bottom, straight line quilting in this area. The zippers are, I think I don't think I mentioned, they're actually some real pretty line pockets oh, yeah. in the zippers. And then this one, the lining. I kind of got crazy with the lining. Oh, that's fun. And the bottom, I would say the hardest part on here is stitching in the bottom, but I break it down one step at a time. And I had some newbies in my class last week and they did great. Um, the bot, and then we firm up the bottom with a, a stiff interfacing and we don't sew it in, we just pop it in there. So those are the three bags we got. Should I show them the free gift? Yeah. Okay. Or the bonus, right? Or both. Whatever you whatever you want. <laughs> it's your show. It's my show. Okay. <laughs> so, um, when you order today, you're going to get the mug rug file. And it comes in two sizes. I've got the small one and the large one. This I believe that was five by seven. I forget the size on that one, but we'll get it for you. And yep. then there's a cute little, I think you got this when you registered. This is your little, yes. little um, cozy to put on your coffee so you don't burn your fingers. So cute. Yeah. I love that because I love coffee. And I also love, I feel like um, anything that has zipper pockets on a bag like that, mm -hmm. it's the equivalent of like getting a dress that has pockets in it, right? <laughs> I love it. It's just so cool. Yes. yes. Um, can you uh, use just one of the Shishiko designs for all sides or do you have to use all eight? So I'm glad you asked because we do have a picture. Hopefully it'll show up well um, in my class that I taught. Mm -hmm. the, the person who took the class wanted to do all, all of these files are set. So if you like this design, you can put this across the entire top. If you like this design, you can put it across the entire bottom. And I did have one person do that because she <laughs> she thought this was too much. And that's fine. You can do that yeah. too. Yeah. Uh, but they don't intermix, of course, because they're set files. I love it. Okay. All right. So are you ready to stitch? Do you want me to play a video? Where do you want to go next? So let me, before you play the video, because we got mm -hmm. two short videos today that, and then I'm going to sew a block as well. One is um, prepping. Let's, let's do the block first before we do the video. Okay. I think you've got to do that first before you go into construction. Perfect. So there you go. That at you, Aubrey. <laughs> All right. Do so you want me to add your sewing machine to stage? Yep. Yep. Okay. Here we go. Okay. So for your blocks, um, there's just two files in here. For your quilted bag, there's two files. For the Sashiko bag, there's actually a total of eight files of which you can pick uh, whichever one you want if you don't want to use all eight. For all of them, you will need a piece of hoop shape. And we didn't really talk about hoop shape yet. Let me get that. Hoop shape is a foam stabilizer. I don't know if you can see. There we go. This is a foam stabilizer that we use inside of our bags. And that's what gives it its shape and helps it stand up nice and firm. Um, and then you will need two pieces of fabric. So you'll just follow your fabric and thread key and cut your fabrics accordingly. So I'm using these two pieces. 
I hoop stabilizer in my hoop, and I've already stitched my one block up here. This is the bottom block. Now I'm going to stitch the top block. And the steps are going to be the same for all of them. The first step is to put a water-soluble thread in your needle and stitch a placement stitch. The reason we use water-soluble thread, this is the water-soluble thread, this is a vanished light water-soluble thread. And the reason we use this is so that when you sew your seams together in your blocks that you don't, if the stitching shows, you can just dab this with water and it will go away. I won't use it today because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. So I have a white stabilizer and I have this um, pink thread. So I'm going to stitch my first placement stitch with what you're supposed to use is the water side of the thread. So this right here is the outline for my hoop shape. And we cut your hoop shape according to the sizes in your fabric and thread key. So this one will fit right here. And on the instructions, it'll say to continue with water soluble. I'm going to keep using my pink so you can see what I'm doing. I just place it within that stitching and let it stitch it down. That is a big hoop. just because this is just a little bit thicker than fabric. So if you have that ability, go ahead and do it. So then the next step, after it tacks down your hoop shape, it's going to sew a placement stitch so I know where to put my first piece of fabric. And you would continue with the water side. And normally we talk about batalizer. I see a question here. Is it stabilizer, cut, tear away, or batalizer? So maybe you could talk again what tell again what you're putting the hoop shape on. Yeah, let me do that. You know what? I'm going to turn my sewing machine lights off. There's a little glare, right? Yeah, try turning it off. We'll see if it looks better. That's better. Oh, I think it is. Okay. Maybe not for you, but for your camera. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you wanted me to talk about what? So maybe talk about um, the stabilizer and hoop shape, because this time around, we're not using battleizer, which is uncommon. Right. Right, so in the hoop, I just have a standard tearaway stabilizer. A medium to lightweight stabilizer will work just fine. Um, these pieces I'm adding here is our hoop shape, which is our foam stabilizer. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes the bag nice and firm and able to stand up all on its own. If I just use battleizer here, it would be kind of soft and slouchy. So that hoop shape is going to give it lots and lots and lots of, um, it'll just make it stand up really nice. Okay, so then the next step is a tack down stitch and I'm going to take my first piece of fabric and I will lay it down over the hoop shape and I know that it's going to, it's going to stitch this side right here. It does specify that in your instructions. And I'm going to go ahead and put in the water soluble at this point. Then I can kind of show you more why we use it. It's really, I feel it's very important. And this is the Banish Light by Superior Threads. So now that that fabric's laying there, I just have to kind of keep an eye on it, make sure the machine foot doesn't push it aside.
By the way, I do have my automatic thread cutter turned off um, on the machine. And the reason is for this next step, and it's going to be doing some quilting, because it does a lot of quilting lines back and forth. And if I turn off my automatic thread cutter, it'll just jump to the next line. And so it's a little bit quicker to sew. And I do like speed. I can trim a few threads a lot faster than I can wait for my machine to knot off, cut, and get back into position. So if you have an automatic thread cutter on your machine, you may want to turn it off to stitch this block. So now I'm putting in my decorative thread, my quilting thread that'll quilt um, the crosshatch right here, or in, if you're doing the sashiko bag, it'll do the sashiko. I am going to go ahead and trim this curved edge. You can trim it now or you can trim it after it stitches. I'll go ahead and do it now. I'm leaving about a scant quarter inch past that basting line, and then we'll let it quilt. The quilting is a really long triple run line stitch, so it has a lot of definition. to stitch for a couple minutes, Aubrey, if you want to talk to them about anything. Okay, that sounds good. And well, I do, Linda, just so you know, I did star some questions that I have okay. seen. So if you want to look through those. Um, so just to kind of recap as she's stitching there, uh, the bucket bag is so cute and it is ready to order now. Um, there are two versions. So there's the quilted bucket bag that you see here. I'm also a sucker personally for anything that coordinates. So to have the free gift and the bonus and the bag, it's just such a cute combination. So there's the crosshatch quilting. Um, and then again, the bucket bags have four sections. Each section has that large zipper pocket, which I think is so cute. And then it's fully lined. Um, and it can include optional pockets on the inside. And I don't know about you, but anytime there's a pocket, I need a pocket. <laughs> then we also have the Shishiko version. And when you order this, you get both versions. So you can do whichever one you prefer. Um, and the Shishiko version has eight different quilting patterns. Um, so you can have a different one in each section. And it looks amazing with the blue and the white. In fact, we just did a survey in our VIP Facebook group and everyone said they prefer, well, a lot of people, majority said they prefer blue. So good timing, right? Yeah. <laughs> I've also seen some questions about hoop size. Now, Linda's using a ginormous hoop and she's done multiple in that hoop. Your hoop does not need to be that big but you do have to have a 6.6 .6 inch by seven and a half inch size to make this, okay? So um, one of those one of those ladies that made that comment, I know you, Marge, I see you, you're, you're you know me, 15,000. Yes, you can do it on that hoop. Perfect, there you go. So um, just know that there's the hoop sizes there and the finish sizes of the project are there too. Um, and, I'm going to star a couple more questions because I see good questions coming. I love the Shishiko version too. Aubrey, are the starred ones blue? Is that what I'm seeing? So, yes, but up at the okay. top, Linda, <laughs> that says live, and then oh, it, yes, next yes. to it says starred, and you can Thank see you. just the start. Okay. Okay. Um, and then, artist, yes, I'll let Nina answer that for you. And these bags, you get, like we said, you get both versions for $45, both included, which I think is so fun. Um, do you want to talk about your class you just had? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this, I've been teaching this class for the last three Sundays in our store. Um, they're not all here. A couple, three of them couldn't make it for the last class for various reasons. But these three, look at them. Aren't they adorable? 
I love it. You gonna tell tell who one of them is? Uh, yeah, the one, the goofy one on the right is our <laughs> other sister. <laughs> the third sister. <laughs> the third sister. Um, that's Arlene, and she's always a ham. Um, <laughs> she, she made this sashiko bag, and she did it in blue. And she was just funny because she's kind of a new sewer. She's not yeah. really been sewing that long. And she tend, she said this, so I can I feel I can repeat it. She tends to pick exactly what the pattern shows. You can see she yep. picked, and she's watching all the other ladies in class, and she's like, oh, 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 I wish I would have done something different. So I hope she makes a second one. Yeah, and I think I love. First of all, I love that it's it's Arlene, but yeah. also I love that. She is new to this and she She's did there. it, you guys. She did it. So it's right. totally doable. I right. love that. And, and then, then what can oh, you go ahead. back one? I want to yeah. say one more thing. The one on the left, the one in the middle is adorable too. The one on the left, um, she actually made those two bags sitting side by side. Okay. One's for her granddaughter, one's for herself. And she did them simultaneously. So wow. Okay. So yeah, so they she, were busy. Yeah, they were busy. <laughs> Okay, and then the, these, I wanted to show these too because I just like the idea of seeing what things look like fabric color wise together. Um, and I also love that she did like the Coca Cola in the center. I think this would be really fun in like sports, sports fabrics, things like that. Um, I have an affinity for the teal and the flowers, kind of like the one that Linda just showed us in the beginning. Um, and then you can see the red. So you can really get creative with a bunch of different colors here too. So Aubrey, I don't think I sent you the other one that was in my class. Um, Sue, who works for me, made one for Alina, for Illinois, the Illinois College. Oh yeah. It, it's adorable. So I'll post that later to show Yeah. Her. Or maybe if she's watching, she could post it, but it is adorable. And she had a zipper that was orange and white stripe. And the oh, fabric, cool. baby blue, white, and orange. It was really, really cute. Yeah, I want to see that. So I think at the end of the day, you could really just pick the colors you love, pick a bold print, and pick a solid or a batik, right? Mm -hmm. So pretty. So I wanted to share those. These are from customers who took classes at Quilter's Yard in Junction City, Kansas. Um, they, they got all their bags in our group, so I wanted to make sure and post those too. So um, I'm going to, I keep starring questions. So forgive me if I'm getting distracted, but I definitely want to make sure that we get all those questions. Um, so I want to talk, we did show, and if you're, Linda, are you ready? Do you want to just take back over? Whenever you want. All right. Okay. I'll put it back to you since you're okay. kind of in the middle of your demo. Yep. Okay. So as you can see, I finished the quilted part. Um, the next step, I and I put water soluble in my thread or in my needle because the next step is to place the fabric that'll go along the top here. So I will place, and all the fabrics are placed right side up. I'll put it right side up. I want to make sure that I'm going to cover everything. So you just want to peek underneath, make sure you got a decent amount of fabric everywhere. That looks good. Hit the start, it'll tack it down. Linda, it's a little hard to hear you when your machine is going. So you might have to feel like you're yelling. <laughs> is this better? Yes. Okay. I just moved my perfect iPad because that's where the sound is coming from. Okay. So then it's going to stitch. The decorative stitch that'll be next okay but before we do the decorative stitch i want to trim out this area right here so i am using my hoop scissors mini and as you can see i'm kind of pulling on this fabric get it nice and close um, it's going to do the decorative like straight line quilting next. So I will put that thread in.
And again, it's that pretty triple run line stitch. Answer a couple of questions while this is stitching. All right. Um, what hoop am I using? It is specific to the machine, so you're going to want to pick your hoop according to the size of the, de the design. Um, Susan wants to know if Basel would work. It's a very similar product, but I have not tested it, but it is similar. Um, do you have only one size weight of foam? Yep, we just have one size weight of foam. And, okay, let me switch my thread. So now it's already done the straight line quilting. Now it's going to do a satin stitch over that raw edge. And I'm going to go ahead and pick, there's just two more steps left, this teal colored thread to do the satin. And the other file that you need to stitch, it's exactly the same. It's just a slightly different size as far as the steps go. Okay, so that's going to do the set. Uh, let's see. Can this be done with smaller hoops? Again, you have to refer to the hoop size or the design size. Um, it definitely can be done with smaller hoops. I just happen to get, have this big hoop that I can put a couple of blocks in there at, a, at one time. Is it done completely in the hoop? No, the parts you're seeing right now is what's done in the hoop. The rest is sewing. Six by 10 hoop. Aubrey, you mentioned the sizes. Yeah, and it's. Six and a six point six inches by seven point five inches. It's right on the screen right now. That's what okay. you're gonna need. Thank you. And how does the back close at the top? We will show you that. Okay, I think that's all the questions, right? Good. You have a question? Annie has a question. <laughs> Well, what is it, Annie? I can't hear you from here anymore. Tell her she can't have my bag if that's her question. <laughs> that was my question. <laughs> <laughs> she said she put it in the comments. I just glazed over. I haven't even seen it. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, I thought you. We're coming to see you next week. I was expecting a bag on my bed. <laughs> well, there's, yeah, there's three of us and three bags. So I guess we can arm wrestle. Huh? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay, what size needle or what type of needle, I should say, are you using? So I'm just using um, a 11 or a 12 will work just fine with this. Okay. And do you use water soluble in the bobbin or just the needle? Only the needle. There you go. I would never put water soluble in the bobbin because I know I would forget to take it out. <laughs> <laughs> so if you just put it in the needle, that will be just fine. Okay, I'm just finishing up the satin stitch, and the last step will be to put my pretty little red thread on there. I think I really call it. It's like a watermelon color. Oh, yeah. Um, and that's going to sew a straight triple run line right over the satin stitch, just to give it a little pizzazz. Linda, can you repeat the needle info? Because I don't remember what you said and Ardeth couldn't hear you. So I'm like, oh. 
crap. I don't so remember. I, I um, use either a, a Janome blue tip needle or a Schmetz size 12. Either one will work just fine. 11 or 12. Perfect. Probably whatever your machine manufacturer recommends for embroidery. This is not real thick, this foam. Mm -hmm. It's not really that thick, so it doesn't really need a huge needle. Okay, so now the last step is this triple run line stitch right over the satin stitch. Online sounds like it might be a good time for me to share slides. Am I right? <laughs> you can because then I'll um, get everything out of the hoop and show you guys. Okay, perfect. I'm going to take over the screen then real quick. And I think I'm going to also mute you for a second if you're still stitching. Are I'm done. Stitching? Okay. All right. So let's talk about how to order this. So we did share two full screens of local quilt shops in the beginning who do have this in stock. Um, they have enough of them in stock that they've also earned uh, the free gift as well as the bonus. So you can get everything that you're getting through us. You can get through them. We highly encourage you to shop your local quilt shop first and foremost. However, we know there's lots of you out there that don't have a local quilt shop close to you. So you can get it from us if that's the case. So the best time to order our new stuff is during the two-day workshop, because when you do that, it unlocks so much cool stuff. So between now and the end of day tomorrow, midnight tomorrow, Wednesday, April 24th, you can get the design and the foams, the hoop shape foam stabilizer in your cart. And when you do, you're automatically going to get 10% off. Plus, it's going to unlock this amazing bonus that will pop into your cart automatically, which is the mug rugs that you see. It's on the left side of my screen. I'm thinking it's on the left for you guys too, hopefully. Um, so again, best pricing and the bundle bonus are available during the workshops only. After the workshops, the 10% goes away and the bonus is no longer included in, in, the, in the special. So without the bundle, if you were not ordering during the workshop, the design would be 45. The hoop shape is actually a fantastic price point at $14.95 and the bonus is a $15 value. So outside of this, you'd be spending $74.95 to really get that complete set. Um, but when you do it during the workshop, some fun stuff happens. It actually will take 10% off, give you the bonus free. So the design drops from 45 to just $40.50. So a little bit off the hoop shape too. The $15 bonus is free automatically and you're spending $53.95 instead of the $74.95. So if you like to save money and you like bags, the best time to get it is today or tomorrow. So this is gonna be a savings of $20.99, which is not bad, right? Um, and then free shipping in the contiguous U.S. If you live in Hawaii, that's your bonus. You live in Hawaii, so we're not going to send it to you for free. <laughs> so, um, so in this case, you would put the design in your cart, hoop shape in your cart, and then you would also use the coupon SHIP75 at checkout, okay? Um, and so... This is the best time to do it because that's going to expire Wednesday at midnight. Okay, so if you don't need hoop shape or you live outside of the U.S., we're ready. I see people asking, what about Canada? If you don't need hoop shape or you live outside the U.S., by the way, we can send you a design in hoop shape in Canada. You just have to pay the shipping. Um, but if you don't want the hoop shape because you just want to get the download of the design, but you really want the bonus, um, then just simply add $53.95 worth of products to your cart. It can be downloads. We have a lot of downloads on the website that are just $15, um, but that would get you the bonus for free. So that's what we're. That's how you get it if you are outside of the U.S., However, Heirloom, I think I'm, I'm going to say the last part of their shop wrong, but I'll put it in the 
Um, we'll post the shops again. There is a shop in Canada that does carry it, and I would highly recommend you get it from them. Give them a call. They can probably send it to you, even if you're not super duper close to where they're located, okay? All right, Linda, you ready to kick it back over to you? Yeah. Okie dokie. Are you, where are you? Oh, there you are. Here I am. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I took it out of the hoop. I just uh, took one of them. And I was just going to show you, this is a tearaway stabilizer. Um, this is the back. A couple of people asked, Carol J says, that's a lot of stitching in one place. Has that ever caused a problem? I'm assuming you're talking about the satin stitching with the triple run line over it. Carol, if not, let me know. But no, it's not caused a problem. I had several people in class with different kinds of machines. It handled it just fine. And then um, Gwen says, it doesn't look like I'm bringing up the, like Linda is bringing up the bobbin thread to the top when starting. I'm not because there's no, this is not a quilt. I don't really care what the back looks like. Uh, we bring up the bobbin thread when we have uh, fabric on the back of the block and we want it to look real pretty and clean. So this is my block. Um, it's a tearaway stabilizer. Let's do this so you can see. I can't see, but hopefully you can see. <laughs> tearaway. I can't see it, you guys. I got to look at it. <laughs> tearaway the stabilizer. This one's a little bit heavier than I normally use, but it's working fine. So this project, we do not use our wonderful Trimmer by George. Love our Trimmer by George, but this one, we don't use it. There we How go. weird. Battleizer and Trimmer. I know. Like, I know. <laughs> so there's the front of my block. There's the back of my block. And now I will take this to the cutting table, and I'll just trim all of this extra fabric around the outside edge to a, a quarter inch. And then we're ready to put our, our panels together. I'm calling... I'm calling this section right here like a zipper panel. This section right here. So this is my top of my my top block that I did, and this is my bottom. And we'll use the sewing machine to put the zipper in. Cool. I also saw a quick question I want to answer. I had to I had to text Sarah to just confirm this um, because someone asked if I get more than one hoop. Can I order more than one hoop shape? Yes, you can order more than one hoop shape. It will be included in the 10%. But I was going to ask you, it, it brought to mind, Linda, how many bags can I make with a hoop shape, right? That was where my head went next. I, I meant to figure that out, and I will for tomorrow. But I really think okay. I will give you exactly tomorrow. I think you can get two bags out of one hoop shape. Because okay. there's there's no waste with it. Mm -hmm. um, like, you know, like sometimes with battleizer, there's a little bit of waste because you have to cut it bigger and you don't have to put it in the hoop. So yeah. you cut it to the exact shape. So um, I will get, I will confirm that tomorrow. Sarah also just texted me and said, Sue Houston has already shared her bucket bag in the Yay! VIP group. <laughs> yeah, Fantastic. She, she made the cutest bag. Really cute. Yes, Gwen, thank you for saying that. Cherished Pieces is a quilt shop in Canada as well. They are new to Hoop Sisters. They just had their first online event with us last week. Um, and I believe they even have a party still open. And Gwen, so if you want it, Gwen, I would get it through them. Okay? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Okay. All right. What's next? So next, um, once you get all of your little pieces stitched, let's see, they, they're not trimmed, but they will go like this. Then we're going to sew them to, we're going to put our zipper pockets in and put zippers in between here. And I did use the zipper by the yard by Sally Tomato. There's other brands out there that'll also work. In the class I taught, the ladies just used the standard quilt shop zippers and that also worked fine too. So if you can get your hands on the zipper by the yard, they're really pretty because they're a little thicker looking. Mm -hmm. They got the pretty poles. Um, but if you just look, like the one gal made it for her granddaughter and she just used regular zippers and that worked as well. So the zipper by the yard comes like a whole, like a big long tape and it comes with a bunch of pull. It comes with poles that you have to put on. So you would go to their website 
and look at their video on how to do it. Jessica does a cute little video on it that worked beautiful. Every time I do it, I refer to that video because I don't do it enough that I can remember. So I would suggest you do that. And then um, I just wanted to share a boo-boo I made. If Sue's watching, she'll appreciate it. This is, you have to cut your zippers seven inches long. And if you cut it off without a pull on it, it's not going to help you. <laughs> you can't pull it. <laughs> Don't do this. <laughs> this is my how not to do it. So I, Aubrey has a little video she's going to play on how to prep your zippers and a couple other things to get started with the bag. Next, we need to prepare our zippers so that we can make our panels of our bag. So uh, follow the directions on your zipper by the yard package and make your zippers each seven inches long. And then you have these little two inch squares that you're going to press with your raw edges toward the middle like this. And then we'll fold them in half again. And I like to make the back half a little stick out a little bit more than the front half so that when I put it on my zipper end, I can see the back half on the underside. So we'll tuck that right in there, keeping it about centered, and we'll edge stitch this on each end of our zipper. My zipper is completed, the ends are on it. And if you give them a measure, they're gonna measure just over seven inches because we cut them seven inches. And then by the time we put our ends on, it makes it about a seven and an eighth, and that's going to be perfect. So the next thing we need to do is on each zipper tape, I do mark the center. So you want to figure out where your center is. It's gonna be around three and a half-ish because it's just over seven. And put a little mark on each side of your zipper tape for your centers. We're going to get a few things ready to completely assemble our bucket tote. So these are called drawstring channels. It's what the drawstring goes through to close the bag. We have four of them cut at three by three and a half. On the three inch side, you're going to press under three eighths inch on both sides and then press it under again. So it will look like this. So this is pressed under twice. And then you'll use your um, decorative thread that matches and you'll do that triple stitch again. So you get a nice pretty little um, triple straight stitch, make it nice and long so it kind of matches your bag. You'll make four of these. The other thing you can do to get ready is we have the actual drawstring itself. And this was two long pieces of fabric that we joined together on a diagonal seam similar to the way you would do a binding. Press your seam open and then press the edges toward the inside and press it in half again. And on this one, I'm going to do uh, the same triple straight, uh, triple run line stitch with the matching decorative thread on both sides. So get those items ready to go. All right. If you guys have questions on any of that, now's the time. We got the lady here to answer them. <laughs> I saw one question I start. Um, Linda said, I love my trimmer. Can I use a no mesh, a no show mesh in the hoop and trim the blocks? Absolutely, you can do that. Yes. If that's the stabilizer you have, that'll work just fine. Ooh. See, now I got the comments coming too quick. Yes, there's just one size, Vicki. Um, Vicki asked, is there just one size for the bag? There's two versions of the bag, but they're both the same size. Okay. All right. Okay, so then the next video we have, we're going to show that now, right? Mm -hmm. This is on how to construct the panel with the two blocks, the zipper in the middle and the pocket on the inside. So um, we'll play that video next. Next step is to get our outside pockets prepared. 
So I have my fabric two strip, which is two by eight, and I have my outside pocket fabric, which I chose this fabric, and this is eight by 12 and a half. And what we're going to do is put them right sides together, stitch a quarter inch seam, press the seam open, and then we get this, my seam is pressed open. And then at each end, I put a pin, um, or you can use a marking pen, fold it in half and mark your center at this edge and your center at this edge. And you will do that to all four of your outside pocket pieces. So let's attach our zipper to the pocket. So at this end of the pocket, the end without the extra strip, we're going to place our zipper right side up and we're going to align my center mark here with my center mark on my zipper. And we'll just put our raw edges together. You can put a couple of pins in there if you'd like. And then you're going to have to move your zipper pull to, to stitch past it and using a zipper foot you're going to stitch down the center of your zipper tape i did make a mark on mine so hopefully you can see what i'm talking about we're going to stitch we're going to start up here do a little back stitch and stitch all along the center of the zipper tape and do a back stitch at this end as well and we will have to move the pull up and down um, to get through that one thing to add a tip to add to when you're putting your zippers together, I would do all four sections of your panels at the same time, all four of your pockets, and make sure all your zipper pulls when zipped up are on the same end um, so that when your bag is put together, they all unzip in the same direction. If you miss and don't do that, it's not the end of the world, but it's kind of nice if they all go the same direction. So next, we're going to attach our bottom. This is our quilted bottom block to this edge of the zipper tape. If you're doing the sashiko design, um, you're going to mark each center of your row two blocks, that would be A2, B2, C2, and D2, on the fabric two end. So this quite straight quilted end like I have here. So basically you'll fold it in half and find your center. I will tell you it'll be this middle um, little quilted line right here. So that's your center. With this facing right side up, and remember we marked our center here, we're going to place it right sides together, lining the, aligning the centers, and we're going to do, what we do a lot of times with Hoop Sisters is where we pin, pin match. So I'll take my center pin and put it right through that quilting line there, right along the basting edge, and I'm going to line it up with my zipper tape see, uh, seam that I just stitched the center, put that pin through, give it a pinch, put the pins in, and pull out the match point pin. And then maybe I'll do the ends. I'll line up my edges. <clears throat> I do want to keep this basting line from the quilted block aligned with my stitching line of my zipper. So poke that straight through, making sure this end lines up and it lines up pretty good. Give it a pinch, take a second pin and put it in. And I'll just do that in a couple of more spots along the seam. And I'll do this and of course when I'm doing this the zipper pull will probably get in the way so we'll just have to stop halfway through in the sewing move the pull in so we can get around it so this end I'm going to again put I'm going to try to line up these edges and also this basting line with my stitch line on my zipper so I'll poke that in peek inside Make sure it goes into that zipper stitch line there. Give it a pinch. These edges are lined up pretty good. Put in a second pin. And then I'll place one more in here. And 
And now I'm ready to take this to the machine and I will use this, um, a zipper foot and I will do a back stitch here. Stitch all along that block basting edge, which is aligned up with my zipper stitching line back here and back stitch down at this end. Here's the stitching line we just did. And now we're going to flip this up and over and take it to the iron, press it this way, press this side this way, and then we will do a top stitch. I'm going to use the same thread that I used in my quilting line, and I'll set my machine for a triple run line stitch and make it as long as possible, and I will do a top stitch right along here. So here's a close-up look of my top stitch. I chose a triple run line on my machine and made it as long as possible so it would replicate that quilting. So that step is done. The next step is to actually take this and flip this lining up like this, fold the pocket in half, and we will align the center mark on the zipper tape with the center mark on my fabric two piece keeping all these raw edges even. These will stick out, that's fine. So you will pin this, and then we will use our zipper foot again and stitch along this center of the zipper tape right here, doing a back stitch at both ends, and you will need to move the pull back and forth. So do that to all four of your pockets. So I've stitched across the top of my zipper tape and you can see we now have a beautiful lined pocket. The next step is to baste the sides together and just to save yourself a step you could go ahead and do that with your water soluble thread in the needle and I would also put in the bobbin a, a, th a thread that's going to show so like right now I've got this aqua thread in my bobbin so if I put my water soluble thread in and I stitch right along that embroidery machine basting stitch, which is the outside of my block. It'll hold my two pieces together <clears throat> for me to finish the construction. And it'll also allow me to see a stitching line back here so that when I sew my panels together, I'll be able to know where my stitching line is. Um, so I highly recommend you do that. And using the water th soluble thread in the needle is important so that when you sew your panels together, and if you have a little bit of stitching showing here, um, it, you can just get it out with a little bit of water. So hopefully you can see the water soluble stitching line. Maybe you'll be able to see both. One from the embroidery machine and one from me just basting my pocket edge. And on the back side, I've got the darker thread in there. This will really help me out when I join my panels together. Last step, almost the last step in putting our panel together is to take the top so if you're using this, the sashiko, you may want to refer to your layout um, instructions and you'll put the top with your fabric two facing together. Put this right side to the top of the zipper. You'll align your centers and align your ends and pin along your block basting stitch, matching it to your zipper tape, just like I did on the previous end. And you'll go ahead and stitch that seam. Here's the seam we just stitched. So we'll flip it out, we'll give it a good press, and we'll repeat that triple run line top stitch right along this edge here, and do four of these, and then you're ready to assemble your bag. That's my favorite colorway. <laughs> I love it so much. Um, I have, a, I did see a couple questions. Number one, first and foremost, the replays will stay available mm -hmm. so you can rewatch. Um, I also, in our VIP Facebook group, which um, Nina can drop a link to in here. So if you're not in that group and you want to get in that group, um, we did have two videos we played. I can put those in separate too. So we can, you'll have this whole video and then we can put those separate too, just to make it easier for you to find. That's a good idea. Um, Carol says, wow, I want to start now. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So we'll have Nina drop the VIP Facebook link plus the order link. Um, and you guys can play around with that. 
And I can also take you at the end of this and show you in the group where you'll be able to find all those videos, okay? Um, anything else you want to mention before I pull up two more things? Um, should we talk about what we're going to do tomorrow? Yes, that's one of the things. I had that. All right, then I'll wait. I don't know what we're talking about, but I, I have a slide when it is. <laughs> what are you talking about? I know I got videos for that too. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about putting your um, little panels together and lining it and pockets and finishing this, the handle and all of that fun stuff. So that's tomorrow. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So that's tomorrow. The last thing I want to do is just a quick reminder that now is the very best time. Anytime we do a workshop, it is the best deal you're going to get with the 10% off plus the free bonus. Um, it'll save you $20.99 if you were to order the hoop shape, the design, and the bonus and paid for all of those full price. Um, you'd be spending $74.95. So during these two days before end of day, midnight tomorrow, you can get them all of that for $53.95. Um, the design, you can do the USB or you can do the download. You can do it either way. So if you prefer a download and you don't want the USB, you can do that. Just be sure you also add the hoop shape to your cart and then you'll get the bonus too, which is awesome. Um, the other thing I want to point out we don't always do free shipping, but right now, if you order $75 worth of items, you can use coupon code SHIP75. It'll go, it'll work if you're in the contiguous US. So what that means is it's a good time to get the vanished light that she talked about. Um, maybe the strip stick, which will, I think you're going to talk about tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and this particular project doesn't use the things we normally use, but the trimmer, if you haven't got that and you kind of want to get to that free shipping, that might be something to consider too. So, um, so again, by end of day tomorrow, end of night tomorrow, <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, day two comes tomorrow, same time, same place, um, 2 p.m. Eastern, which is my time, 1 p.m. Linda's time. And then noon mountain time and 11 in the morning over on the, the Pacific coast. So we will be back tomorrow with a lot of assembly. And if you guys have any questions, I think I might even put a little post in our VIP Facebook group since this one's a little different than some that we do and see if you guys want to list your questions. We'll make sure Linda gets to them. Thank you, Carolyn. That's so great. She said your instructions are great but I'm so glad to be able to rewatch the videos. It is, it is going to be really helpful. So real quick, I'm going to jump over to our VIP Facebook group because I want you to know exactly where these videos are going to be. Um, and while I do, I want um, you guys to know that I'm going to do the giveaway right after that. So just type the word bags in the comments and that way we can do our giveaway. Okay. Uh, right. Aubrey, yep. can, so Gwen says Cherish Pieces doesn't have the bonus mug rug. They're one of our stores. Is that the one in Canada? They're in Canada. They have, they don't have these in stock. They're just doing a, they did a party. Uh, so if they get enough uh, people, they will. So I yeah. would just have them get a hold of Nina. And I think their party's closing today. So we'll let the Nina, we'll let the Nina, we'll let the shop and <laughs> Nina talk and coordinate. Okay. So we'll get it taken care of. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to share my screen and I want to take you guys over into our VIP Facebook group. So when you get in here, this is what it'll look like. And across the top, it's got some good stuff in here. Okay. So the discussion tab is just general posts. There we are. There's our live video. Mm -hmm. um, and then at the next thing over is guides. And if you click into guides, the first one is customer service. It'll tell you exactly where how to get a hold of us and that good stuff. Guide two is going to be the bucket bag workshop. So right now our live video is in there. When we get off of here, I'm going to add two more videos that you did watch today live, but that way you can easily access them and replay them and all that. So that's there. Also, we are streaming on YouTube at the same time. Um, I don't know how we're so technologically advanced around here, but we are. We're over on YouTube at the same time. Mm -hmm. So you can always watch the replay on YouTube as well. So however you like to do it, okay? 
Um, yes, 2 p.m. is 1 p.m., depending yeah. on the time zone you're in. Um, it's all at the same time. It's just 2 o'clock to me and 1 o'clock to Linda. So <laughs> we love time zones, don't we, Linda? Uh, they're very confusing to me, Aubrey. <laughs> <laughs> I always tend to go the other way. I know. <laughs> <laughs> or we say, let's meet at this time. And we're like, your time or my time? Right. <laughs> One of us is an hour late. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> or an hour early. <laughs> or an hour early. Yeah. All right, you all. Well, um, Linda, if you don't have anything else, I think that's a wrap on day one. All right. I'm excited. Thank you for joining us, everybody. I hope, uh, hope you enjoyed the bag. Yes. I did. I liked it. I, yeah. I'm going to steal one next time. I'm, you better hide it before I come visit you. This one's my favorite. Sorry. Oh, my <laughs> <laughs> oh winner. Thank you, Nina. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah, winner. <laughs> Good thing Nina's on top of it, you uh, guys. What would we do without Nina? I would have not mm -hmm. done a giveaway, I'll tell you that. Mm -hmm. Let's go over here. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you commented the word bags during our live, you are entered into this drawing. So here we go. We are going to see who wins. And by the way, you are going to win $50 in sister <gasps> store credit, which is That's pretty amazing. pretty good, right? Quilt Ma, <laughs> Sue Gooden. You must be a quilting grandma. That's what I think. <laughs> so Sue, what you're going to want to do, let me pop this up here. <coughs> Excuse me. You're going to want to email Nina within five business days. Let her know that you just won $50 in store credit for day one of the Bucket Bags Workshop, and she will get you hooked up with some store credit. And if you have any questions about placing an order, your account, your situation, just know you can get a hold of Nina if we didn't get you answered here in the comments. Um, the customer service information is below. Give her a minute because the phone does get a little crazy when we hang up from the workshops. But if you have to leave a message, she will get back with you. Um, so just know that. Okay. Look at this. I think our, our little group, our little community here is so sweet. Look at all yeah. those congratulations in yeah. there. Yeah. I love it. And then Loretta said, Nina's the best. She sure is. Cause you guys would have not have had a giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> we would have had to do it twice tomorrow. <laughs> I know. <laughs> all right. Thanks for joining us. Come back tomorrow, 2 PM Eastern. And then Linda's going to do a whole bunch more. So we'll see you then. All right. Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks for joining us.